Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds, back again. Lukey, what's up, brah? I'm ready to talk some fishing, Joe. Some fishing. Yep. So this came about because last week we did a little fishing trip. We had a guest in town, actually a gentleman that we were interviewing for a new role here at Salt Strong. He's one of our insider members. We try to hire internally. One more reason to be an insider member. And uh, we took him out and he came all the way from Jacksonville. So, you know, drive about four hours and we obviously wanted to put him on some fish. And, and I noticed uh, I had done zero pre-trip planning. I had a lot on my plate and a lot going on. And I left at, you know, five that morning to get there to St. Pete on time. And, you know, we get on the boat and I asked Luke, hey, where are we going to fish? And, you know, I, I watched him just real quick, you know, pick up his, his phone and he looked at Smart Fishing Tides, which is the site, you know, for, for the tides and wind and weather and all that. And I mean, it, it looked like in a matter of three to four, maybe five minutes. I mean, he just sat there on the way out in the idle zone and already he had, he had put a game plan in his head. And, and Luke takes it for granted. So I, I, I talked to Luke afterwards, like, man, we gonna need to go on a podcast and just talk through how your mind thinks, because what most anglers do and what we did for many, many years is we just go back to the same old boring spots and maybe they're not boring, but we go back to the same spots that we caught fish last time. Like, Oh, I caught a big red fish there. I caught a big snook there. And we don't ever really think, or, or maybe we don't think long enough about looking at actual trends and looking at the wind, right? Looking at weather. And that's something that you do so well. And so we ended up, uh, I would have not picked what you did probably because I wasn't prepared, but I saw you like, you like, boom, uh, we're going to hit these docks first. And then we're going to go hit this flat over here. And it ended up being like the perfect pick. It's like when a coach calls that right call and uh, everyone wins and you scored a touchdown. Uh, it was like an amazing day in two hours. And uh, so I was like, we got to get a podcast and just talk about that. You know, how, how to quickly find spots, like how to, as soon as you get on the water using our, an app, like smart fishing tides to know, how to pick the best spots. So that's the problem. And in kind of the agitation part, we always like to do the problem agitate solve. Agitation is you're going to keep getting skunked and being inconsistent if you don't do this the right way. And we know because that's what we did forever. We went back to the same spots that we just caught fish before, never thinking about, you know, hey, there might be some trends here, or we might want to fish these docks because this, or we might want to fish wind protected shorelines or points because of this. So that's what this entire episode is going to be about. I know it's a long intro, but uh, it needs to be said. This is something that I don't think we could talk about enough because it's critical. I mean, this is how you find the 90-10 zone, right, Lukey? That's right. Very long intro. You were right about that as well. But, oh, you're, uh, and you're welcome. In the, uh, in the core, so the core problem in both Joe and I did this for many years and, and most people that, that we consult is, is, is the, spo the focus is on spots. Hey, if I only had some spots to go to, hey, I'm fishing an area, like what spot should I go to? I'm going to, I'm traveling over to St. Pete or Tampa or wherever, like what spot should I go to? And, and without knowing the, like the, the recent trends, most importantly, the feeding trends, and, and, and like what the conditions are going to be for whatever day you're going to be fishing. If some, if anybody gives you a spot to fish without knowing any extra information, like when you're going to be going, what, what time of day are you fishing? What's the tide doing? What's the weather doing? That, that's meaningless because the, the, it's all about the type of spot based on conditions. So, and once you know the type of spot based on conditions, you know, the conditions, and then you know what type of spot you should be going based on the conditions. That's when you can, you have unlimited spots. So that's really been the focus. That's the focus of our insider club. Um, that was the, my focus th that, that morning when we went out, I just knew the type of spot based on conditions. In that case in particular, we just had a cold front. Uh, the top water bite had been really good in the mornings, but the cold front was going to shut them down a little bit. And we had a low tide. And so it was easy choice. Okay. It's going to be a little bit cold and a little bit shallow for the flats. So let's fish docks, which right, obviously have deeper water because boats have to go up to them. And then as soon as the water came up a little bit, uh, then we can go fish up the flats, up on the flats and go after some, some reds and snook. So that it was really about the type of spot. And then once we got on the flats, okay, should I fish the wind, wind, windy side, wind protected side? And again, the answer came back to trends. The most recent trends was to fish the windy sections. And that's what we did. And we immediately caught fish. So um, the, again, the key, it wasn't on having some sort of secret spot. 
it was the key, and this is again, this is so crucial. That the key was just knowing that the feeding trends, uh, the, the real time feeding trends. Every year is going to be a little bit different. It's really about what happened like the last few days, or the, or like within the last seven days at least. If you don't have that intel, you're you're at a significant disadvantage. I mean, that's really why fishing guides consistently catch fish because they're out on the water consistently. They're networking with other guides, so they just have the latest and greatest intelligence. Uh, for many years, I, I took detailed notes on my trips. I would have a folder with like each month, year over year, and I would write down, you know, I would write mark on every on like the actual tide chart where I caught, like what species I caught, and then I would have like little indentations for the, the spot that I was fishing, trying to make meaning of it. And in reality, like the year over year stuff didn't help me much at all. Where I really started getting better is when I started networking with other anglers and just networking, hey, like I'm about to go out, what's been happening in the last few days? Like if you know that information, hey, what's been happening this last week? That is that is the best intelligence you could ever have. Um, so, so those were like the two things that I did wrong where I focused on spots for many times without without thinking about the conditions. And uh, and then I was trying to like do so hard like year over year analysis. And, um, and just with how different the weather patterns are, like it's, it's, uh, it, it's not very helpful. Seems cool, but it's just not very helpful. Well, it's kind of like that old saying, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. And if you teach him how to fish, you can feed him for life. That's all it is, right? Because uh, getting in a form or even our insider club and, and asking the question, hey, I'm here in this area, where should I fish? It is cool. It's a shortcut for someone just to give you the spot. But if someone can teach you how to find like tell you kind of the spot or the type of spot and then teach you why and how that came about it's game changing and that, that's those are the transformations that we love hearing and seeing every single week inside our insert club that's why we've now have seventeen thousand members it just keep every time we get on a new podcast like 15 16 now it's seventeen thousand. we're growing like crazy and it's because of that uh, obviously a lot of people love saving money on all their tackle too but uh th those shortcuts are amazing you have to work for them a little bit and i think that's that's maybe one thing that people some people don't like you know just because we're all just as humans a little bit lazy we we like it done for us as much as possible but it's not that hard i mean it's something if you just studied for a couple of hours and just watch 10 minutes a, a week which is what luke does every single friday 10 minutes or less get on there and do the smart fishing uh, game plan it's it, it's it's not that hard it becomes a whole lot easier um, and, and talk about the docks too. I think just a great tip in general that, that helped me, uh, think about a good time to fish docks. This is not always the case, but in this case, you got low tide as Luke mentioned, the flats might not be as good, but the docks are great during low tide because the fish are still going to hold the structure. They're not just going to completely leave and go away unless the docks are completely out of water, which they're not, but they're all going to be down that deeper area. So guess what? We can stay a little bit further back. We can skip some baits underneath there with a little bit heavier jig heads. We were using one fourth ounce jig heads, uh, Luke and, and the gentleman that we were uh, uh, with, Nate, uh, they were both using those shrimp, those Brazilian shrimp they're going to be coming out with soon. And I was using Slam Shady on, a, on the one fourth ounce jig head. And guess what? All the fish were caught right there at the end of the dock because it was too shallow from the go up towards uh, towards the front, all except for that one area that had a seawall. It was on the point where where the where it was a little bit deeper and the fish were still holding close to that. But every place else where it was just normal docks and not that point, they were all sitting there at the very end of the dock, like taking candy from a baby. Yeah, I mean, low tide, it's just dock fishing is it's easier to do because there's just less pilings to fish because <laughs> the pilings up there close to shore are now totally dry and all those fish have to shift further out. So it's just mathematically, there's going to be a higher concentration of fish. The fish aren't just going to go across the bay at low tide. They're just going to shift out towards the deeper pilings. And so it just makes it easier. So that was an easy choice in the morning for the first spot and, um, and just increase the odds of redfish, and uh, which is what we're hoping to get into um, and, and some, and some good trout. Uh, that's where the, the, they've been all over the flats. And so that was why, you know, I wanted to wait on that water to come up a little bit. And then we just, you know, we just did a quick, uh, quick change of, uh, of spots and, and checked out that, that shallow flat. And, and again, the, the, in all of those spots I've fished before. So that was, it made it a lot easier because like I, I knew the type of spot and then I have multiple spots just like that, that I fished before. And so I went there, with like a, 
95% confidence rating that we were going to get some action. Um, but the, the same thing holds true when you're fishing new waters, which is, which is really where this, um, this type of spot based on conditions is, is, um, is most rewarding. Um, cause it's just fun to explore new areas, right? Like we all go out and ideally every time you go out, you try at least some one new spot just to like, see what, what else is out there and expand the horizons. But in many cases, like my favorite thing to do is just to go to a whole new area that I've never been to before and the entire day fish new spots. And so this was like, this was last Friday. So it was like three days after our trip uh, that we were just talking about where that um, now our new employee uh, came over and we fished, but uh, had a meetup to schedule a meetup in the insider club. And it was the last second thing I scheduled on Thursday. We went, we met up on Friday. This is at the Skyway bridge on the, on the uh, Bradenton side and never been there before. And I was fishing from the paddle board, which I, I haven't done in a while. It was just nice to get some exercise. And I used the same type of spot theory, right? On the, I basically fished the exact type of spots based on the conditions and caught a slam. Caught a slam in a spot I'd never been to before. Um, got into, and um, I had two members show up and they all caught fish. In one case, we, we found this, this area that was, that was like the perfect textbook spot and snook were in there and they're like feeding like jacks. Like when I was paddling up there, I, was, I saw some fish bust in and I thought, I assumed they were jacks and I saw, I saw this snook jump out of the water. I was like, oh my gosh, these are all snook. And so we both caught a bunch of snook. Uh, then, I, then I shifted out to the type of spot that I've been catching redfish in St. Pete. And it matched the same type of spot based on the conditions, right? The wind was hitting it just right. The current was hitting it just right. And so I wonder, this looks like the perfect, the perfect situation. Sure enough, I get there and I come on a, I get on a school of like a hundred redfish, all big ones. And I found them when I was hooked onto a jack. So I was like really bummed. Like the jack pulled me over the school of reds and spooked them. So anyhow, I got the jack off and then I um, actually broke, it broke, broke the line that got me into the mangroves. But then I, I went around and just let those reds settle down a bit and got them on it again. And, and I caught like a, it was about a 30 inch redfish um, on the bomber, on the new bomber lure. The bomber. The bomber. And again, that was a spot I'd never been to before. And it was just so cool. First of all, it's cool seeing the fish, right? Just seeing that many fish. But then to just to sling a lure at it and watch them eat it. I mean, like, it's just, it's just awesome. And, and again, once you, once you really get it dialed in, the cool thing is that you can just apply it to wherever you go. So you're not going to have to, to reach out and ask somebody, oh, like I'm traveling this new area, where should, like what spot should I check out? Just know what the trends are, like know what the feeding trends are. And, and we cover it at least once a week. Um, actually every day there's new trends coming up in the community. And you just apply those trends to whichever area you're fishing. As long as the what as long as there's not like a really big weather pattern change, the trends are going to stay. The trends are going to be uh, in sync. Usually they'll last for a week or two. Um, but then if weather pattern comes, you obviously teach you how to make the alterations. But um, but yeah, it's just, I, I just can't emphasize enough the importance to pull away from like a GPS spot focus and, and really focus on the type of spot based on the conditions. Super, super important. And I think some of you might be thinking in the back of your head that, oh, this is not going to work for me because I don't live in Florida, et cetera. And we hear that. And so I pulled up in our community, in our insider community, we have a private, private app here in the community. And this was today, and it says, follow the tips. This is from Brad, one of our Insider members. The title is Follow the Tips. You guys can see that there if you're watching this on the tube. I'm going to read what it says. So I watched the weekend tips, which is the smart fishing game plan we've been talking about. It's 10 minutes every Friday, just 10 minutes. If you don't have time to watch a 10-minute video to get better at fishing, then you might need a new hobby. So I watched the weekend tips and followed the instructions. I fished the wind-protected points used big paddle tails five inch or bigger i'm going to tell you this is a gist of what it was last week well started out a little slow with some small trout moved around a little caught a large mouth pass on a gulp shrimp then finally found the perfect point when protected and able to position the boat just right had a good hour of non-stop action i really appreciate the staff here at salt strong well thanks the tips and wealth of knowledge here is amazing not to mention the community page what a great site and then he's got bunch of different pictures of the slew of fish i don't know if you can see that luke uh yep. that uh that he caught i mean taught that's quite a few reds and trout uh there he is with one of the nice nice reds and this is in louisiana louisiana it ain't close to florida and and i share that with you because you know we have members from texas to really even new jersey now that are all using 
the same community based on what Luke said. I mean, not just for Luke Smart fishing, you know, game plan every every week, but just the community in general to, to hear about what's working in, in uh, what Slidell, Louisiana. Um, I mean, it, it's amazing how well this Intel works and, and can be used anywhere. A lot of people say, oh, it's just not going to work there. I mean, I, I was a, in Georgia here this summer and guess what? I use the exact same blueprint that we're using down here in Florida. Yeah, things look a little bit different. Yeah, there's a pretty pretty big difference in tidal flow, but still still did the same trend, still went up the same types of areas based on what we knew, use the same lures. Even the guy we're with, he's, he lives there and he's like, man, you're not going to catch any fish on that lure as the Alabama leprechaun. I was like, watch me. And all of a sudden catching just as many trout as they were, you know, using, using shrimp. Um, so this stuff works. You don't have to switch it up. I, I know we all like to maybe make that excuse that my area is different. It's the same in business. Everyone likes to say my business is different. No, no it's not. You, you, you still have customers and clients that still all have a, a need. Uh, you still create leads and, and prospects the same way with any kind of business and, and you serve people. Uh, it's the same with fish. You, you just got to, you, you have to know the trends. You have to know what they're looking for, which is what Luke, just really kind of two things, you know, food and, and shelter. So they don't get eaten by something bigger or taken away by a bird if they're a juvenile. And, and once you kind of solve for those two things, you start finding the 90 10 zone. And if you haven't watched that webinar, I'll make sure to put it in the show notes. It, I think it's one of the best webinar trainings we've done. We've done a bunch of them over the years and it was called the 90, not how to find the 90, 10 zone, the 90, 10 thing. We did not invent that. Uh, th this has been around for quite some time, quite a few authors, uh, old school fishermen, both on the bass fishing side and saltwater side have talked about this 90, 10 zone and, and full-time guides, tournament anglers have talked about this 90, 10 zone. And, and, and Luke subconsciously is doing that. And this is what he doesn't realize, but I watch him do it. He's so good at using the weather and using the tides to pick out that 90 10 zone. And if you don't know what that is in a sentence, it's basically that 90% of the feeding fish are going to be in around 10% of, of the area, any kind of area, big or small that you pick out. The, the feeding zone is going to be really small. And the easiest thing to do instead of just trying to find that that zone is start eliminating areas, right? Uh, when Luke's looking at that, Luke, what were some of the first types of areas that you eliminated on that first trip? Uh, when you're when well, you're looking areas with no structure, right? Okay. I mean, we're, we're targeting redfish, snook trout, and then when docks dock fishing, there's there's been a lot of group around, so um, we're just trying to get some action. And so the place that they're not going to be is a area with flat sand and nothing to ambush prey. <laughs> so that's the guaranteed uh, let's not fish there type spot. And instead, let's go to the docks and then in particular, the docks with a variety of structure. So they had seagrass, some of them had some rocks um, and because the more structure, you know, maximize your structure, you maximize your results is the, the saying we usually do. But um, yeah, it's like I just said, it's it's um, it's just weeding out the, the, the majority of the water that's most likely not gonna be good and then using the, the trends, the feeding trends to really dial in on, on the, the specific spot that the fish are most likely going to be in at that given time, at any given time, based on the current flow, the wind direction, all that stuff. Because what most people do, what we did for many years is we gave the fish way too much credit, thinking that they outsmarted us, you know, like they're down there just really contemplating like the lure color, right? Oh, it wasn't the right <laughs> color, so I'm not going to eat it or um no oh, it just like something looked just barely off wait a minute so, this is not two percent milk this is one percent milk yeah yeah <laughs> in in real all they're doing is reacting like that their their brains are very small and they're just doing uh the the reactions that their body and, and small little brain is telling them to do based on what they feel and as long as you just understand how they react to like a change in water temperature or or even the current flow or even wind like wind ripples um, you have a huge advantage because now you know what they're going to be doing um, before they even do it. And so you can put yourself there in the right zone. So we have that, that course for the club members. I know a lot of people go through, but it's the, it's the Finding Fish, Fish Mastery course that goes into the nuances you know, by season. Um, and, and that the cool thing, again, this is all like a redfish in Florida has the same biological preferences as a redfish in Louisiana, as a redfish in Texas, up in the Carolinas. A redfish is a redfish. And as long as you understand how those fish will naturally uh, react to specific things, you have a huge advantage because they're going to react to that specific thing over and over and over and over again. 
And so again, that's that's why the feeding zone trends is so important. For as long as as long as the weather stays consistent, they're going to be reacting to the same things, which means they're going to be putting themselves in the same types of spots throughout as long as those conditions are kept constant. And that's when you that's when you go out and, and just really dial in that 10% zone. Um, yep. So that's really that's that's really the focus of the insider club. And uh, it's not about trying to sell spots, you know, like that's not like those spot maps that you can buy anywhere because those spots are static. Um, they'll be good for a little bit of time, but the fish move. And if you don't know what to do when the fish are moving, you, I mean, you're gonna, you're not gonna have good results. So that's why those spot maps rarely do much good. Um, yeah, and we will put a link in the show notes at saltstrong.com forward slash podcast, go check out this one and we'll put a link. You don't have to opt in. We'll just give you the, the webinar. And if you're an insider member, you, you've, you've already got it in your, uh, your account. You don't have to watch that one. Uh, more importantly, if you're an insider, go watch the, the finding spots mastery. That's that. I mean, that's, that's the course. It's, it literally, when we sold that thing for 297 bucks, uh, you know, and you get it free as an insider member. Uh, so if you're an insider mm -hmm. member, go watch that. If you're not an insider member, go watch the 9010 when it's completely free webinar that we, uh, we did uh, earlier this year. And it, it is truly amazing. And I want to say something too, it, that I've, I've seen and witnessed because we've been through a transformation ourselves. We, you know, and that's why we created the club. It's everything that we wish was around when we were struggling, we we're inconsistent and, and, and many times frustrated and, and I truly believe that these fish were smart, like you said, and, and that they were completely different, right? That if we were fishing in, in Tampa, it was even different than like Little Gasparilla Island two couple hours down and certainly completely different in Georgia or South Carolina or, or Texas, Louisiana, et cetera. And, and now what I've discovered is all, all the pros, all the experts, guys like C. Richardson that we fish with and, you know, fished redfish tournaments in all these states, he says the same thing. He's like, man, redfish or redfish is redfish, regardless, they're literally the same fish, same biology. And the people who dis, so 100% of the pros agree with that, that you use the same trends and, this, and the same thinking to catch a redfish anywhere a redfish exists, okay? And so 100% of people agree with that who were good and consistent. Now, on the flip side, the people who all say, oh, that's complete hogwash, they're completely different. 100% of those people are not consistent. They're the ones that just, they, because we were there. I mean, I used to think that was been like blasphemy to say, oh, they're all the same. Uh, it, it's just, it's funny to see the switch, knowing what we know now, that, that they're not as hard. It, now, that doesn't mean they're easy to catch. That doesn't mean you catch them every single trip 100% of the time but your chances skyrocket when you do start believing and knowing that these fish are similar and it's all about trends. It's all about thinking about why this fish would be here based on the tides, based on the wind, based on the weather and based on the trends that we're putting out every, every week in the insider club. It, it, like I said, fishing's never easy. It's always that never ending puzzle is like how we try to describe it. It's, uh, you know, one of those puzzles that you feel like you're getting to the end and all of a sudden you realize, man, I still have a whole lot more to learn. And that's also the beauty of it, right? It, it, it's a puzzle that doesn't end. And, you know, even if you're 40 today at, at age 70 and 80, you're still going to be putting pieces together and learning more. It's a never ending in a good way, learning experience and, and always a new adventure. And I think that's what's so cool. And, and, and that's the reason that we do share so much in the Insider Club is we love going out and exploring new places. Uh, we don't have any spots that are our spots or that uh, we're afraid to, to share because we know the truth that one, we don't own the spots, but two fish move every single day, every single tide cycle. And, and the only way to truly get consistent is to study those trends. So I, I hope, um, I hope you will join us in the insider club. And uh, if you're still on the fence, go watch that 90, 10 webinar. Uh, we share a lot and we actually go dissect real spots. So we get on satellite maps and kind of have like three case studies in there it is super, super helpful. Um, and, and we've done obviously some on the podcast as well, just kind of showing how we pre-trip plan because that's where the magic is doing all, all the, the pre-trip planning and, and, um, you know, spending 10, 15 minutes a week, not, not a day, um, not every hour, just 10, 15 minutes a, a week. It, you'll be blown away with the knowledge that you will gain and how much more consistent you can be. And then of course the icing on the cake is you get to save 20% off everything in our store and our store is a lot different than the, the other stores in it, Lukey. That's right. We just have everything you need and nothing more. <laughs> we keep it simple. So it's not good, not to confuse because a, a big problem. There's just so many, I go to like a, like a Bass Pro and I, I like Bass Pro. So I'm not saying it's bad, but you go to like the jig head aisle 
and there's a million different jig heads. Okay, like which one should I get, right, and why? Yeah. And so we have uh, we have the ones that at least we found to be best so far in testing. We'll obviously adjust it as needed um, for those who are who are targeting redfish, sea trout, snook, flounder. That's the, our core species. So it's really a tackle store that is for anglers who are specifically going after those four species. Yes, we have some stuff that you can use for tarpon and triple tail, that kind of stuff. But the core premise is if you're going after redfish, sea trout, snook, flounder, this is this is the ultimate place. So we have the lures, but most importantly, we teach how to rig them, use them, and, and where to use them, where not to use them. It's, it's like all of our main lures, like all the slam shady paddle tails, they all have courses. So whenever you, if you do buy them, uh, you'll get an email with uh, with a mini course that shows exactly how to use them, how to rig them best for certain situations, right? Covering different depth zones, uh, how to retrieve them, even how to set the hook, what gear to use with them. A, a lot of people mismatch their gear, like their rods and reels with their lures. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Uh, what lines to use. A lot of people are not using the right lines. We did the, we did it wrong for many years and that stuff's a game changer. And there's a lot of money savings too. You know, you don't have to spend Two hundred dollars on a reel, um, in many cases, and so you can. Uh, we basically teach you how to get the most out of your money, and the most out of your time on the water. is really is really the premise of the whole club. So. Yeah, one of one of our members he recently said, "You guys have created the consumer reports for saltwater inshore saltwater fishing. The consumer reports meaning we're out there going to test this stuff. We're buying it ourselves. We have zero sponsors, zero. We have had many offer. We've turned on every single one." And so we go out there and use, I mean, obviously we're using discounts and yeah, we're writing it off, but we still have to go buy this stuff for our own money. We go uh, even what well, we had recently, Luke, we had one of the uh, D hookers, right? What's the first thing we do? We throw it, throw it in the salt water. Uh, let's, let's see how long this thing really lasts uh, after being completely dunked in salt water. So we're going out there and testing this stuff and then reporting back to our members, what we believe is the best value. Uh, that helps everyone out, right? It means we have a store of stuff that we know works, that we use ourselves, not just something that we think is going to sell off the shelves because it's got a cool marketing thing. And, and and sometimes those, you know, things that have cool marketing do work, right? Like those little crabs. I'll be honest, those chase bait crabs, like why would anyone pay $10 or whatever it is for these chase bait crabs? They look real. They got to be just phony baloney. We, we bought some like, holy smokes, these do work and, and they don't work all year long. You're not going to use it as your go-to bait all year long, but for catching sheep's head, holy smokes, like I was blown away. And so guess what? We start carrying those things. Uh, they're kind of tough to find now right now with the COVID deal, but I, I love the fact, and I know some of our members love the fact that everything you see in that store is stuff that we personally use and we're vetting ourselves and we're spending our own hard-earned money on. And, and, and able to tell you, hey, this is really the best. And occasionally we'll have something that's a little bit obnoxious like that $800 reel that I, that I bought, uh, mostly because I wanted to win the bet. Uh, but we will have some, so there's always someone who just wants to buy the very best. And uh, I, I guess you could justify it because it's a lifetime guarantee, but ooh, man, you could buy what, eight eight of the Fuegos, Daiwa Fuegos for that. It's, that's yeah. tough. Yeah, but I mean, it, it is it is an awesome reel. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, that's that's a lot of money to throw down for one. So I personally don't. I go for the cheaper stuff because I'm on my paddleboard a lot. I'm uh, I'm accidentally dipping the the reel in the water, and I'll I just would be much more upset dipping eight hundred dollar reel in the water than uh, than a cheaper one. Even if there's a guarantee, it's just like a hard thing to. Yeah, it would be very upsetting. Well, it is sealed, so you know. Still upsetting. <laughs> never like to see anything metal going in that's all water it is true cool man well i think this was uh this was helpful i i wanted just to record this one with luke uh because i know this is something that it's something i still struggle with uh, i i am definitely not where luke is he's light years ahead of me uh he some people just have that gift but he's also he's put in time right not not just on the water but off the water studying this stuff and where it's just it's almost just instant all right boom i eliminate all the areas i know fish aren't going to be so i got it boiled down to these and based on what the wind's doing and based on where the tide is you know here's here's the places i'm going to pick and 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 obviously we could spend five hours on here talking about it but the best way to get this like real time on demand all year long every single week is to join us in the club that's what we're doing that is the focus and that's why you'll continually hear us harping on this uh you know it's not about the spot it's about the, the type of spot based 
on trends based on what's working right now. So I hope you'll join us there for you current Insider members. Thank you guys. We love you. You are the foundation of our company. You're our family. We really, really appreciate you. And if you're not a member, either join right now and you'll start getting all this stuff. You can go right through the Finding Spots Mastery course. It's yours today. Uh, and if you're still on the fence for whatever reason, maybe you just don't like crazy 365 day guarantees. Maybe it makes you a little nervous. You want a two-year guarantee. Well, one year's as much as we can do. So if you're still on the fence, then go check out that 9010 webinar. I, I think you'll be blown away. And, and that, that usually gets people to say, all right, I'm in. I want to, I want to be part of this group. I want to be part of this family. I, I get it. Uh, those case studies are super, super helpful. So I will put that on the link. And the reason why we, the reason why we chocolate on the year guarantee, because that that's literally the, the, we try to go longer, but our merchant, like they, they're no, you cannot go longer than a year. Yeah. They're legally that's as long as we can go. Yeah. The uh, years like nobody else offers them anything like it. This is, this is a satisfaction guarantee on the club that we, yeah. that we fulfill the two promises, right? Catch more fish than ever before and save money on your tackle. So if we don't, so if you don't think we somehow uh, over exceed both promises, then, then we'll refund all your money. Um, so that's, that's how, that's how strong we believe in it. And, uh, and we've, we've like Joe, Joe just read a couple of testimonials. We hear it all the time and it just energizes us when we hear feedback like that. And uh, it's when we have full confidence that you're going to, you're going to enjoy it as well and see some, some noticeable results that you can enjoy and even pass it down for generations. Yep. Cool. That's it guys. We appreciate you. Appreciate you listening to the podcast or watching this on YouTube. Uh, you know, if you are listening, we, we did obviously record this. So you'll see the video there and the show notes all at saltstrong.com forward slash podcast. Look for this one. I believe the title is going to be how to quickly pick a good spot based on uh, tides and weather, I believe is what we're going with. So I haven't published it as we're recording it, but I believe that's what we're going to go with. So it'll be something like that and hit us up. Uh, we're always available a uh, fish at saltstrong.com will make it to us. That's fish at saltstrong.com for any kind of questions, anything we can help you out with. And of course, if you're an insider member, post your questions in the community. There's new posts going up every, I don't know, every five minutes now, uh, new fishing reports, questions. We'd love to hear from you in there. We're personally checking that multiple times per day. So that is it. We appreciate you. We out tight lines. Hope you get out on the water soon. Pow! See ya.